Hi guys! So if you've been watching my channel you'll have noticed that I really really love my colour pencils. I love the control that I have while I'm using them and I love the look of the finished pieces. They've easily become my favourite medium to use. But there are two things that I really don't like when I'm using colour pencils. Now the first one is that I put in hours and hours and hours and hours of work into creating something to the best of my ability and at the end of the day it's just a piece of work on paper. It's flimsy, it's easy to damage. Honestly, it makes me feel sick to my stomach worrying about creasing or bending all of that hard work. It just, I don't like thinking about it. Um, and I think that fragility sort of really damages the perceived value of a colour pencil piece. When you buy a painting, it's nice, it's solid, it's something of substance, but a colour pencil piece even though the artist has put in just as much hours and just as much work and can look just as good as an oil painting, it's flimsy and it's it's just not going to last as long. Um, I think that's a real drawback. I think working on paper just sort of holds colour pencil pieces back from being taken seriously. Now my second issue is that I like to use odorless mineral spirits to blend, which works fantastically. But as it breaks down the wax in the pencil, you will get areas in your drawing that end up a little bit more matte and a little bit more dull compared to areas where the colour pencil is more pure and it's a bit more glossy. Now, the odorless mineral spirits will do that in an oil painting as well. You will get areas where if you've put more thinner in your paint that it'll be more dull compared to areas of pure oil paint. Which is fine in a painting because when you're finished, you can just go over the top with a varnish of your choice, whichever sheen you like, and even the surface out. But you can't do that on paper. Um, if you add varnish to a flexible piece of paper it'll just crack off in time and just leave a big mess. It's, it's a real shame that I can't apply that same method to my colour pencil drawings and get a really nice even finish. So to overcome these problems I've been working on a method of mounting my colour pencils pieces to a nice sturdy board so that that movement and fragility is no longer an issue. Um, I've had a lot of discussions with my local art shops and framers about the best methods to do this and I've been getting some really nice results so I thought it would be a nice chance for me to run you through how I've been doing this so far. Okay so here's everything we're going to need to mount our picture. Um, I've got some wax paper here just to protect the surface of my drawing and sort of keep it clean from any debris that might be around the place. Um, I've got the drawing that I want to mount. Um, I've got a board to mount it to. Now I've used some picture matting board that I've purchased from a local framer so I do know that this is archival and it won't damage my drawing in any way um, but you can use any archival artist board or panel they um, I think ampersand does some boards uh, you can buy the birch wood panels um, I would be careful before using MDF or wood from the hardware as they won't be acid free um, so if you must use those I would prime them pretty heavily with gesso just to give you a layer between the wood and your hard work um, I'm using the Atelier Heavy gel, heavy gel gloss, um, which is previously known as the impasto gel. You may find it listed for sale under the impasto gel still. Um, this stuff creates an incredibly strong bond and, and it's completely archival. Um, I will leave a link in the description to where you can buy some of this. Um, I've got a nice wide brush so I don't have to mess around too much and a blade to trim up any edges that I might have left over at the end. Okay. So the very first thing I'm going to do is clean up the surface area that I'm working on. This is my usual drawing area and you can see that there is stuff everywhere. So I'm going to make sure I get this really nice and clean and very, very dry so I'm not accidentally making a mess of my artwork. Then I'm going to make sure that I have super clean hands. These artist hands are quite often covered in pigments in strange places. So I'm always going to go double check. All right, nice clean surface. Um, I'm still going to be paranoid and I'm going to put down a nice layer of wax paper just to be safe. Alright, so I've got my board here and I'm going to take the impasto gel. Now this stuff dries pretty quick and uh, when it does dry it bonds very quickly so we do have to work a little bit carefully here. And I'm just going to very carefully paint over the surface of the board where I'm going to attach my drawing and I'm going to make sure that I get it right to the edges because that's where the bond needs to be the most secure and I'm going to try and give it as nice even coat as possible I don't want to um, have too many ridges in there because I don't want that to show through on the, this is an impasto gel and it will hold the shape of those ridges so I want to make sure that I get a nice 
even coat. Alright, quick dish out, dash out to wash the hands. Get that down so I don't have any accidental sort of um, gel on my board, on my um, backing board here. And now I'm going to very carefully line my drawing up onto the surface of this board. I'm going to bend it a little bit as I go down and aim for the middle. Now this is a very exact fit so I do have to be a little bit extra careful. It will move for a little bit, but it does set up very quickly. Okay, so I've got a nice... Alright, and my next step is going to be take another piece of that wax paper and stick it on the top and start pressing down. Now, with a larger piece, you would most likely benefit from using a brayer to sort of get a really nice even pressure. But I don't have one of those quite yet, but as I'm doing this I'm sure I will pick one up. And I'm just going to make sure I work any air bubbles out. And sort of make sure I've got a really strong bond there. This wax paper just makes sure that I'm really not risking smudging my work as I do this because that would be a terrible shame if I'm mounting something I obviously want to look after it so okay so now that I'm pretty confident that that's very flat on there I am going to weight it down as it dries so I have some nice heavy dense boring accounting books which I'll never find another use for hopefully in my life and I'm going to weight this down and let it dry at least overnight. Now just for good measure I'm going to stick another weight on there. Um, because that board and that paper did get wet with the Ampasto gel there is a bit of a chance that it might curl as it sort of sets so this nice heavy weight will make sure that it uh, stays flat as it dries. And that's it, super simple. Um, I'll show you when it's all finished. So that little piece is going to take some time to dry, but in the meantime I'll show you this little seagull drawing that I did on a piece of the Canson Meteans pestle paper, which is only a very lightweight flimsy paper. I think it's, um, hang on let me check, it's only 160 GSM so it's very very lightweight. But once it's all mounted and varnished up, it becomes as solid as a rock. Um, now I haven't been very gentle with this at all. I've been throwing it around my studio just quite roughly to see how it holds up. And the whole thing is just as um, well put together as the day that I drew it. So this has been a really pleasing result. Now I've done this on a couple of my more sort of special pieces and I really love the finished result. It just makes the whole drawing a bit more solid and a little bit more better presented. It just makes it feel like it's better put together. Um, now the only drawback I can see to this is now that I can no longer sort of roll this up in a tube and post it if I wanted to, um, if I wanted to sell it. Now that can be a big cost difference. Um, it is a lot cheaper to roll your, art, uh, roll your artworks up and send them by mail that way. But to be honest, I really don't like doing that anyway. Um, I, the idea of taking something that I've put so much work into and then asking somebody really good money for it and then just rolling it up in a tube and, and sending it off in the post is just... Oh, I really don't like doing that. I'd rather just sort of swallow the cost, uh, especially at this A3 size, it's not too bad. Now, of course, you can do this method with your blank paper too. Um, if you don't want to take the risk of doing all the hard work and then going and sticking it down and sort of maybe messing it up, you can mount your paper before you start working on it too. So that's definitely something worth considering. Okay, so here we are the next day and my little butterfly is now permanently bonded to that board. It's never going to come off. Um, I have taken a second to take my blade and trim off any excess paper from around the outside just to make sure it's completely flush to that board. And he is now ready to go as is. Or if I choose, he's now firm enough for me to add a layer of varnish and seal it all together. So next week I'll be showing you how I varnish these pieces once they're all mounted up to even out those gloss levels and to protect your drawing even that little bit further. So I hope you'll join me for that. 
I hope you've enjoyed this and found it useful. Please leave me a like or a comment to let me know what you think and if you'd like to see some more of my work why not hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching guys.